Hi, Casper here from Bose Wine on the 27th of January 2016 and we're mid-2014 Burgundy offer which is selling pretty well actually and um, I thought how nice to try a bottle of white Burgundy from a, a state particularly dear to my heart really this is uh, Meursault Vievigne so a, a village uh, cuvée uh, from a uh, producer called Buisson Charles. Now for many years Buisson, Michel Buisson produced some of the longest living wines of that village and indeed of Burgundy and beyond. Um, Son-in-law Patrick Esser has taken over and uh, I think the wines continue fascinating, uh, delicious, age-worthy. 2008, um, Vievin, uh, so this is a, a, a village cuvée and a, a selection of parcelles, so I think there are probably, I can't remember, I, oh, I reckon saying seven different parcels of, of vines varying in age, some incredibly old, some just old, um, blended. Uh, anyway, good healthy colour, sort of greenish cold, but you know, deepened with age. Uh, it's January 16 now, so, uh, you know, six, seven, you know, seven and a bit years old or whatever. And um, I'm talk talking about Merceau to the father of a friend recently, and um, I sold him a case of the 09 of this wine, and uh, today he's been trying it, and it's lacking what really what he thinks of Merceau as being all about and really what he was wanting when he when he bought the wine from me and and that's what people used to get from the Merso of old which was a rather overripe oaky honey and nuts sort of character that people associated with with Merso and it was it was really a brand almost of winemaking to produce something that the market considered Merso like and in fact, what's happened, uh, as I'm sure you'll know, uh, in recent years is that people have just said, uh, forget all that, expressed the Tawa um, cleanly and clearly. And um, so this is what th these wines are about. So they don't perhaps taste like Merso 40 years ago, 30 years ago or whatever, uh, but they do have distinct character, minerality, clean voice, a transparency, uh, uh, an interest. So this is this is kind of the basic cuvee. Incidentally, all Patrick S's wines are fantastic under the Brisson Charles label. I mean, yeah, the Aligote is absolutely stunning and will keep you know five or six years, no problem. Uh, Village Merceau, well, here we are, seven whatever years uh, drinking the 08, which incidentally is a vintage that Patrick doesn't particularly like or didn't particularly like um, perhaps just from a winemaking point of view but uh, results are as we'll hopefully see in a minute um, pretty good um, right up to the charm uh, good door the golden drop good door Boucher uh, brilliant and in between the Tesson uh, and uh, these are wines that, that keep a very long time and, and uh, you know I've been to visit the estate and Patrick has said come in the cellar and he's poured me some a sample out of, uh, out of a bottle of wine and it's been absolutely un incredible delicious and, and clean and lovely and he said well I opened that 10 days ago and I think that's a demonstration of how they age because actually when a young wine oxidizes very very slowly I, I, it seems it's it's a sign of its stability in the way it'll age in bottle anyway. So you know this has taken on colour, and funny it has got something of the nut about it. Hazelnut, sort of mature, and that's the maturity of the grape. A sort of hazelnut lime quality, a touch of smokiness about it. I mean, it's got something of the uh, sort of slightly touch fudgy about it. A touch of fudgy maturity. It says to me, drink this now, and you know, in the next couple of years, probably. Um, but you know, obviously, want to back that up by something that we're told on the palate as well. So there it goes. Mm.
Well, up front, there's a repeat of that um, slightly, slightly, slightly fudgy character, a sort of breadth that speaks of great maturity in the bottle. From which, from about halfway through, swoops this fresh, dense minerality, a fine sort of tilth on the palate that um, is the terroir coming from one of these parcels, and it's it's like the finest powder, like the texture of, of icing sugar or, or just flour, you know. Um, And nuts and um, salinity, you know, it's, it's quite a saline wine. It's um, got some fresh acid in the middle of it, you know, it's, it's um, a, a wine that has a deep rooted energy to it. Um, and I, I'll be fascinated to, to, to watch this where, where it goes because. Uh, as I said, you know, it's got this superficial character which is speaks of fudginess. Interesting to see if that if that goes with there because it might be something that's developed uh, in the bottle an anaerobic sort of quality, um, but it might be great maturity and and um, you know looking at the colour that perhaps would be my guess. Um, although I think. I, th I think that's clearing up all the time and losing the slight, st slight stodgy character and becoming much more sort of clear voiced and, and, and focused. It's a citrus thing, I mean there's definite orange there, there's, there's a hint of, um, a hint of apricot, it's, um, and the lime as well, and of course that nut. But such such density, such a mineral sort of explosion of, of, of freshness at the at the end. I mean, this is um, good wine. It would stand up to some pretty serious food. I mean, I think lobster thermidor probably wouldn't be a problem for it, but. Um, I'm going to follow this over, well, the course of the evening, obviously, but also the course of the next few years. And just find out where it goes. And I kind of like the last bottle I drink to be slightly over the hill. Um, and to have seen it from the cradle to the grave, you know, having tasted out of barrel originally. Uh, and just follow its evolution and see what it does. It's, it's fascinating. These wines are fascinating. I, I you know recommend Brisson Charles to you wholeheartedly uh, if you are happy with Merceau that isn't all honeyed and nutty and, and rather loose but wants some focus and terroir and, and then you know there's, there's a little better really. <laughs>